We love to do hard things together. We've discovered. So that's really one of the reasons we talk about being a power couple all of the time is it's so invigorating to do challenging things with your spouse and succeed, you know? Welcome to the Get Your Marriage On podcast. I'm your host, Dan Purcell, a Christian marriage and intimacy expert and coach. I'm on a mission to help couples have the best sex and most emotionally intimate marriages possible. Our episodes cover topics you've always wondered about and are packed with practical advice designed to help you take your marriage to the next level. When you hear the term power couple, what comes to mind? To me, I think about a couple that is dedicated to each other and committed to building a marriage in which they know they can tackle every challenge that comes their way. And also probably a couple that has a lot of fun together too. My guest today is Melanie Sedley. She's been on our podcast before. Check out the episode we did last year on how to talk dirty without feeling dirty or awkward. I admire how she's taken growth and development in her marriage so seriously. I'm inspired by her, in fact, considering how dysfunctional things were between her and her husband and where they are now. It's like saying, if they can make it, so can I, so can anyone. Several things stuck out to me in this episode. Melanie emphasizes the need for systems and processes, having a growth mindset, the importance of giving both people in the marriage partnership their voice, recording your wins and your struggles, and the value of consistency and persistence. She has taken all of these items and put them into a convenient planner that any couple can use. If you haven't heard, we've announced a fun and exciting virtual marriage retreat. This is different from the in-person retreats we do. This retreat's focus is more on sex, technique, pleasure, passion, and deep connection during sex. It's the kind of retreat where you and your spouse will want to get a hotel room or send the kids to grandma's for the weekend and join us live via Zoom webinar. It's coming up on June 9th and 10th, which happens to fall on International Lovemaking Day this year, which is a double bonus. And you can get all the details and sign up at getyourmarriageon.com, click on retreat, and then choose virtual retreat. Melanie, it is always such a pleasure to speak to you, and welcome back to the Get Your Marriage On podcast. How are you today? Thank you so much. I'm so great. It's <laughs> always a pleasure to be here, and how are you? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So I'll, we're going to talk about power couples today. Can you tell me of a time where you and your husband, Seth, worked together as a power couple where you had to, like, I don't know, move something heavy or something? <laughs> I, have, I have a few really great examples of like actually moving a heavy thing as a power couple. So my husband and I... We've over the years, we've been married for uh, almost 19 years now. We have developed this teamwork ability and like really, really grown it as a couple. Because in the beginning of our marriage, we were just like so terrible at everything. But literally, I have a funny story of us moving into, we moved into an apartment a few years back. We only lived there for a while, but we had to get our huge sofa up three flights of stairs. And we're like, we don't need help. We're just going to do this ourselves. So here's uh -huh. me and my husband. Neither one of us are giant. Let's be very clear. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. we loaded, we hauled that thing up three flights of stairs on our shoulders and literally had men in the parking lot are like, do you need help? We're like, no, we got it. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we moved ourselves into our apartment, hauling sofas up the, up the, all the flights of stairs. And then another funny one is, um, I actually have two other funny ones. Well, I'm Native American, even though I don't look like it. And we put uh -huh. up a teepee by ourselves, which is so dangerous, like massive, just like 30 foot long poles. And it almost crushed us <laughs> like it, uh -huh. while we were inside <laughs> of it. And it like twisted, but we saved, we saved ourselves. Um, yeah, we have tons of fun. the tipping teepee then? The tipping teepee, there it was. But it was, it's an adventure. We love to do hard things together. We've discovered. And uh -huh. so that's really what like, one of the reasons we talk about being a power couple all of the time is it's so invigorating to do challenging things with your spouse and succeed seed, you know? That is so good. Whether it's teepees or moving furniture or other teepees, things like that. Teepees, sofas, marriages, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. But it always wasn't that way. Tell no. me, like, take us to the beginning. Like, what was the yeah. genesis of your relationship with your husband like? Oy, are you ready? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> it. It was crazy. So I'm from the Seattle area and my husband is actually from South Carolina, the Bible Belt, like deep South Greer, South Carolina. If you've ever been to Greer, that's how they say it out there. Uh -huh. And uh, when we got together, he had moved out to Seattle to be in a band. He was in a Christian band called Emory. They're still a band. He's not in it anymore. But he moved mm -hmm. out here. So when I met him, he was this like Southern charm, but wearing like emo skinny jeans. We met at Starbucks. We fell in love, all the things. And I thought I was marrying a rock star. Listen, uh -huh. I thought I was marrying a drummer for a band. 
he quit the band unexpectedly when we were engaged and became a therapist. <laughs> like, the last thing I thought he was going to do I was like, oh, all right. So I that married a therapist. <laughs> I know. It's like, where did that come from? Um, but in the first few years of our marriage, it was so challenging. From, I think from a cultural perspective, like I thought he should be one way. He thought I should be another way. And then we just didn't know how to communicate on anything. And we fought each other more than we fought sort of like the world. You know what I mean? And so uh -huh. we, so everything that we do now as our, in our podcast has come from, and again, our podcast is called Anatomy of Us. And like all of it is earned the trust that we have for each other, the communication that we have for each other. And we went through a really, really hard season um, mm -hmm. a few years into our marriage. And that this is really the genesis of our entire show. Um, mm -hmm. We went through a season where Seth admitted to me one day as I was holding our two-week-old son. I had, already had, I had already had one kid. I had a one-year-old uh -huh. in a crib and a two-week-old in my arms. And Seth comes up to me and he says, I've been lying to you and I've been looking at pornography. And I fell apart. I don't know why. Uh -huh. I just, it was terrible timing. He didn't do it in a great way, but I mean, he did the right thing. Like technically mm -hmm. he did the right thing. I lost my mind and it got so bad. I actually gave him a black eye at one point. Like uh -huh. it was uh -huh. terrible. Everybody thought these two are going to get a divorce. There's no way they're going to make it through, but we just stuck it out and worked and worked and worked harder and harder and harder. And, um, at the time our struggle was that we couldn't find the resources that were like real and raw. All we could find was this sort of like fluffy, you know, if you're already in a healthy place, like love languages. And those things are really great, but they don't work when you want to punch your husband in the face. They do not no. work. Uh -uh. And so when we got through everything and we, we were healing and, and things were way, way better, we were like, hey, we should create the resources that we wish we had had. And so it was like, okay, how do we talk about stuff in a more open manner? How do we really get like down into the nitty gritty stuff um, to bring help for real couples? And that's, that's what we do now. So it's, that's again, good. it's all earned. So I'm very passionate about it because it did not come cheap. <laughs> uh, no, it did not. What are some of the mindsets of a power couple or are there different sections that make a power couple, a power couple? Like, Oh yeah, absolutely. I can, sections? I'll explain to you how it works. And, and the way that the reason I made it a planner was because I, my husband and I are high performance marriage coaches. So we mm -hmm. work directly with couples and I kept having to repeat the same thing. And I was like, listen, for, for, in order for you to like have an amazing marriage, to be the power couple that you say you want to be. So a lot of our clients will see us. They'll see me and Seth. They'll see us doing fun things together and being silly with our kids and going all over the world. And they'll want to be like us. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. well, here's what it takes. You have to have a growth mindset. You cannot have a fixed like, well, I know the answer or you're just a bad guy or everybody's dumb or whatever. You cannot have a fixed mindset. You have to have a growth mindset. Now, that is not like switching on a light switch. That's a mm -hmm. process. Just the growth mindset part is a really long process of like the books that you read, the practices that you do. Like Seth and I both did 75 hard, that like exercise workout challenge to make uh -huh. ourselves tougher. Like we need to have more grit, right? And so mm -hmm. we push in all of those areas. But yeah, growth mindset, I think is like by far the most important thing to start out to become a power couple. And then there are strategies, like, again, I made a whole planner around it. <laughs> so I can, <laughs> I can tell you more of the details, but yeah, there's strategies, there's, uh, but it's consistency. It's showing up regularly. All of those things that make a Tell power. me the time you've like, you've faced something hard and you're like, but because you had a growth mindset, you're like, oh, I can work through this. Yes. I'll use one example that was really hard. This was really hard. This is actually when we lived in that apartment that we carried that couch up three floors. So uh -huh. um, my, yeah, my, our son, our middle son had like a mental health crisis when we lived in those apartments. For some reason, it was like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was, I have no idea, but it was so challenging. It was one of the hardest seasons of our marriage ever. He was like, he went into an, he was actually diagnosed with acute, um, I think it was like acute adolescent depression or childhood depression. It was something I had never even heard of, but he was mm -hmm. diagnosed with that during that period. Again, it was acute, meaning it was only like for a tiny season, but he like lost his mind. He, he would like scream at us and fight with us. And it was the first time in my life that I was like, oh, this is why people get divorced over challenging children. And mm -hmm. it was so challenging. Like Seth and I for a while we're fighting each other because we didn't know what to do. We just didn't know, like, how do you manage this? How do you handle this? The other kids are affected. Like, what do we do? And so we decided, we, we rallied around our marriage and said, if we don't do this together, we are not going to survive this. 
And mm-hmm. if you're a parent and you have a kid like this or you've gone through something like this, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And so we really had to rally together like how can we be the healthiest, strongest, safest marriage for our kid? How can we help our other kids? So it was really just like this call to a higher level of marriage and relationship. And again, I know that's like a that's a really serious example, but that happens in the world every day that people are faced with stuff like that. And when you have the skill set and the tools to prioritize your marriage for the safety of your family, you can succeed. It's I don't know. I get super passionate about it because that was like Oh, such a hard time in our life. Mm-hmm. I can think of a funner one if that one was too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it funny how it's often through our crises that we become mm-hmm. stronger? Absolutely. Yeah. And I yet, think it shows us that we have to be. Mm-hmm. But a lot of couples wish they didn't have the crisis. Absolutely. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. I have, I, okay, listen, if you're watching this, I have tons of tattoos, right? Uh-huh. But the one tattoo I don't have that I got, I got the guy to draw it and everything. There is a tattoo. There's a saying. It says, smooth seas do not make skilled sailors. Right. So the only reason you can be a skilled sailor is if you have gone through the storms. And I was going to get a massive ship and it was going to have like rope and it was going to be on my side. And then I was like, that will hurt. I don't want to get that one. (laughs) (laughs) But that's the way I look at it. It's like I... I want to live. Which is a- ironic, I gotta I say, right? I know, right? That'll hurt too much. Never mind. Uh, but it's put it on I a think- smooth part of your body, like. I know your side is like what hurts the most. I think he said they, they charge more because it hurts more. Um, but that's the way that I look at it. Is like I want to look back at the end of my life, whenever that is. Let's say I live to be 90 years old, and I want to be sitting on my front porch in my rocking chair, and I want to say I did everything that I wanted to do. I lived my life fully. I showed up for my marriage. I showed up for my kids. I showed up for myself. I did my adventures. Like That's how I want to have lived. But people mm. who avoid the storms, don't they don't get to say that. you know. So mm. there's a lot to be said for um, learning, like looking at tough seasons as um, a growth, like again, a growth mindset. If you can look at it like that, there will, there will be a gift and a blessing somewhere in there, even if it's like really, really hard. But can you really avoid the storms of life? No, no, you can't. So face them. Like, uh-huh. put your but how you hat face on. them, that's what matters, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. And I think, right. too, it doesn't only matter for like your relationship. Like, how I face the storm matters to Seth a lot, but it also matters to me and my kids. Like, mm-hmm. if they see me show up and just face that storm, right? They, they, it just, it matters a lot how we face our storms because they will come. And I mm-hmm. would rather face it fighting than not, you know? Right, exactly. All right, we talked about mindset and how growth mindset is so important. We talked about facing our storms. What other elements are there about being a power couple that you've incorporated into your planner? Oh, yeah. So I think consistency is totally key here and because everybody knows. Like if I said, well, what would make a good marriage? They go, oh, well, mm-hmm. okay, here I know. They'll say, you should go on a date night. And then, and you should like have time with just your spouse. You should schedule intimacy. Like they'll tell you all the things, but then uh-huh. they will have done none of them. And so I got so tired. So consistency really is so important in any area. So if you want to become a doctor, you consistently show up for medical school, right? If you want to be great at anything, tennis, Mm -hmm. I don't know, soccer, being a doctor, painting portraits, I don't know, you Mm -hmm. have to show up. And so one of the things that is almost, it's almost too simple sounding, but uh, it was so impactful was when I was like, I need to just make this into a planner. I can't just tell people because they will not put it into their planner. They need to have Mm -hmm. a thing in their hands that they're holding that says, okay, Monday I'm doing this, Tuesday I'm doing this, Wednesday I'm doing this, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm doing these things consistently because although they say they know it, they don't do it. Um, And so again, I think nothing beats consistency. Like the people who become proficient and the people who become masters were consistent. Um, and I think of, I love this idea and I don't know, I don't know if you've, if you've heard this, I don't hear anybody talk about it, but I don't like motivation as much as I like dedication. Okay. Motivation will change, right? Like you can be uh-huh. motivated to do something. That's cool. But mm-hmm. dedication goes a whole lot farther than motivation, you that's know, so and people good. wait uh-huh. to feel motivated. Like, well, I didn't feel like scheduling a date this Friday. So it's like, didn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, are you dedicated to scheduling a date every Friday? So do it anyway. Mm-hmm. Kind of mean, Dan. I don't know. Uh-huh. A little bit mean. <laughs> Do it anyway, right? Uh-huh. Do it anyway. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, your feelings will catch up. You'll be you'll be glad you did. You know. Mm-hmm. But I think dedication and consistency and showing up every single day of every week of every year for your marriage. Mm-hmm. Like, why wouldn't you? That reminds me. Like sometimes I love to run, but sometimes 
I don't feel like running. I don't have a lot of time or it's cold outside or whatever. But if I'm going to train for the marathon or whatever, Mm -hmm. you got to put in the miles. Mm -hmm. Like it takes dedication. Yeah, absolutely. And then like, I didn't know you love to run. Uh, I I didn't. So I think too, Mm -hmm. like then if you are doing it and you're dedicated to it and you do it even when you don't want to, when you're doing that marathon or whatever, you'll know how to get through the storm of that marathon because there'll be one. And Mm -hmm. it's only because your feet hit the pavement over and over and over. And that's dedication, not motivation, you know? Mm -hmm. It reminds me also what it says, what I learned in the book, Atomic Habits, which Mm -hmm. is a great book by James Clear. We don't rise to the level of our aspirations, but we fall to the level of our systems. Yeah, I know. I love that was like one of my, I love that book. I'm all about SOPs, like make a system Uh for it, have a checklist for it. SOP is for those that don't know. Standard operating procedures. Right. Right. You need to have standards. Like what are Mm -hmm. you, and even that is such a great question. Like what are the standards of your marriage? Right. Mm -hmm. I bet you, I'm going to put you on Or what are the standards of how I am going to be Yes. In my marriage, right? Yes, that's, that's a better uh-huh. way to say it. Yeah, yeah. But like, uh-huh. what are yours? Do you have some like marital standards that you can think of? Yeah. Uh, there's no name calling, for example. Mm-hmm. Perfect. We try to go to bed together and wake up together. Mm-hmm. Like, so there's some consistency with those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. But like, in my conflicts, who am I going to be? I'm going to be patient. I'm mm-hmm. going to try to be as open, open-minded and understanding as possible. Like, Try not to blame or look for my role in how I'm contributing to our dynamic. Like those are the things that come to my mind. Yeah, that's beautiful. And most people just Mm -hmm. never even think like there should be a standard in your marriage, even if it's something that feels, it feels minor to be like, we go to bed at the same time and we get up at the same time. Mm -hmm. That is not minor at all. Doing that over the course of 40 years is transformative for a Mm -hmm. relationship. And I think it's foundational for a healthy relationship. But yeah, I think consistency just people underestimate the power of showing up daily for a marriage mm-hmm. and they overestimate what it will be like. Oh, we'll just go on a really great vacation. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, no, that's that's cool sometimes, but uh-huh. keep your consistent daily stuff and that's the game changer, you know? Mm-hmm. Or consistently go on vacation. Very. I like that. <laughs> I like that twist. <laughs> Very good. Consistency is so key because it mm-hmm. creates systems. And once yes. you have systems then over time, mm-hmm. it, it helps you form those healthy habits. Great. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What other elements are there that makes power couples power couples? Uh, well, let me show you. Can I show you the power couple planner? Have I showed it to you yet? Look at this. Uh, yeah, Maybe. you've showed Yay. Yeah, I love it. I'll, uh-huh. um, so some of the things that are in here, again, I think this came from working with clients. I don't know if I said that yet, but um, you know, Seth and I do high-performance marriage coaching, and I had to keep telling my clients the same thing over and over and over again. Schedule your date nights. You should attempt maybe to schedule sex and intimacy if you're having a hard time doing that. You should talk to one another. You should schedule times to go on walks. And so what I did, um, again, what, what I found was a little bit shocking to me that people were like, well, how? What do we do? It's like, what do you mean, what do you do? How do we hang out? How what do, do you mean? How do you hang out? Like, how do you, uh-huh. What do you mean? What are you asking me? And uh-huh. so in the Power Couple Planner, we have 211 conversation starters that have little check boxes next to them so you can check them off. Um, we also have 100 date night ideas that are like anything from like go get leaves in the fall to like take a vacation in the Bahamas. They're, they're just all over the map, right? So that mm-hmm. they're, they're, you know, go bowling, go um, volunteer your time at an animal shelter, whatever it is. People don't it genuinely feels like people don't know how to connect anymore. Right. Partially because we've got our phones in front of us. We've got plenty of distraction. Yes. Yes. The distraction Mm -hmm. is everywhere. And then really there's, there's no place generally speaking that we can systematize this in a clear way. And so Mm -hmm. my whole goal, like I said, is like it's Monday through Friday. It's literally a plan. I'm just going to like hold up mine um, and show you what I'm talking about. But like you have this whole, like this is your week at a glance. And, and for highlight- those listening that don't see oh, the yeah. video version of this, yeah, Melanie's yeah, yeah. holding up, uh, looks like a planner. It is uh, a planner. It's a power couple planner. It's, yeah, it's it's a big sheet. Yeah, right. Uh huh. And yeah. uh, it's kind of got a grunge look on the front. It says, till death Til do death. we part. Yes. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's very grunge. It's very It's got a lot vibes. of humor with that, right? Yep. And then she's got a box for like the days of the week and kind of what we're going to do mm-hmm. for this thing. Right. And so I'll just read you. This is actually our real planner, the one that we use. And so I'll, I'll just read to you what we have on our days. So we sit down every Sunday morning and we go through our week ahead and we schedule out our connection. So that is, I'll, again, I'm going to read you mine. Mm-hmm. 
So last Sunday we did church and cards with the kids. So we wrote cards for family. Mm -hmm. And we also have a little heart on Sunday, which indicates intimacy, right? Uh -huh. um, and that, As and in again, physical intimacy? Yeah, like physical. Oh, yeah. So, but that mm -hmm. could be many things. So that's it could include sex, but it also could be like snuggling, whatever mm -hmm. kind of intimacy you need is what it's going to, what you're going to put in there. The next day is our connection. Our everyday connection is TV and stretch before bed. So like we'll watch TV and like stretch, like kind of do yoga vibes while mm -hmm. we're watching forged in fire or whatever uh -huh, which uh -huh. works because my husband is also a runner so like he needs to stretch and it and it's fun like we're hanging out and then tuesday is mario with the family we play mario mm -hmm. with our kids and it's super fun but again like it's scheduled this goes into our actual calendar it's not just like being oh, intentional I hope I play. yes mm -hmm. being really intentional on wednesday uh actually we do we podcast together which is our like recording days and it's very connecting when we podcast it's always super super fun so that's our connection and then we also do therapy on Wednesdays. Um, and then on Thursday, it says snuggle and watch TV date night. We have written down going to sumo sushi and then intimacy again there. And then we had on Saturday, our kid had a concert, uh, like an orchestra concert thing. So we went to that. Um, and then the other really cool thing too, that people don't often think to do is putting like using affirmations for your marriage on purpose. So on here on the um, weekly page, we have a section that just says affirmations. And then there's a little thing that says, look in the back for inspiration. And in the back, there are tons of aspiration or affirmations and inspirations about marriage. And um, ours, the one that we wrote was, we are getting great at communicating clearly and lovingly. And some of the affirmations are like, every day that we hang out is a blast or I love connecting with my spouse. Like just speaking life into your marriage every single week. And one of my favorite parts about the planner is that it's not just one person filling it out. It's not just the wife. That happens a lot where the wife is the one who takes this stuff on board. The husband just go like, nah, I don't know, follows it. But right. we're, we're asking couples to sit down together and do this so that the husband can say how he wants to connect. It's not just what the wife thinks of. Because that's mm -hmm. what happens is that it'll be like the wife is like, well, I love taking walks at the park. And the husband's like, I never want to see the park again. But he'll never say anything. She won't say anything. And so then they just have these like awful misconnections over mm -hmm. and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to avoid that from happening. So you have to take turns. So like Seth will fill out Monday. I'll fill out Tuesday. He'll fill out Wednesday. I'll fill out Thursday. Um, and really, again, it's the consistency and like really like front loading your week with intention and focus and positive energy around your marriage is transformative. So the other really cool thing that I did, um, again, this is like my baby. So you're just going to have to, it's like my fourth child. Um, but one of my favorite things is there's a bi-weekly check-in. Again, I made this for my client. You don't have to be a coaching client to use this. Obviously, people are buying it all over who aren't my coaching clients. But there's a bi-weekly check-in because I kept running into this same pattern. We would have client calls. And I would ask, hey, how's everything been going this week? And the, the one of the, usually the husband would be like, it's going really good. And the wife would be like, no, it's not. And I'm like, wait a second. How is that the answer we're coming to all the time that they're not on the same page? So we have our biweekly check-in. It's a full sheet here. Mm -hmm. And it has questions like, and it'll be like you and I, my husband and I would both have to answer them. So what is some proof of progress in the last two weeks. So you have to write it down. So like I wrote in this one, our therapy session is proof to me that we are making progress. They are hard, but they are helping. They are helping. So like that is literally what I wrote in my real book here. Another one is let's name three areas that I could grow over the next week. So this is me taking responsibility. Um, my three areas that I wrote are to be more forgiving, to be more communicative and to be open. Um, mm -hmm. then we have my favorite memories from the last two weeks. So that, then you're just like celebrating what's the fun things that we did. So again, it says sushi was really great. And the last weekend I had a good time talking about our future business. I love sushi if you can't tell. And then, uh -huh. and then we have the last one is inspiring ideas for the next two weeks, right? So like mm -hmm. what things do we want to do? And on this, it says, we're going to go see Jordan Peterson in Seattle, which we did. Um, and we're going to go hiking if the weather gets better. Seth wrote down going fishing, hunting, and cleaning the house together, right? So you have these check-ins so that you can actually take the pulse of your marriage so that it's not just one person saying, yeah, I think things are getting better. And the other person's like, this is dumb and I don't like any of it. You know, you have to have these sort of check-ins. The other really amazing thing too is that in the back we have a ton of resources. Uh, for example, the clearing structure. So I'm just going to hold this up again. The clearing structure 
Mm -hmm. is a therapeutic tool that we use with our clients all the time. And it's a way to help you if you're in conflict. So uh, it's a list of questions. You literally walk through them. So the, it's numbered. So it says, when you blank, I felt blank. What I make up about this is, what that reminds me of this is, what I want from you is, and what I want for myself is. And it sounds complicated when you're hearing it. You're like, that doesn't make any sense. But when you're in conflict, you literally write down like, hey, Dan, when you told me I couldn't handle my emotions, I felt really hurt. What I make mm -hmm. up about this is, is that you don't love me. Like you don't think I'm smart and you don't love me. What I want from you, Dan, is to like acknowledge that I was feeling overwhelmed. What I want for myself is to feel like I'm, you know, to feel confident and loved by my husband. And then it gives you, it even gives you a paragraph of like how to bring this up with your spouse without starting a fight. So there mm -hmm. are, two, there's a ton more tools than just the clearing structure. We have the um, kill your mood killers template. Mm -hmm. Like some mm -hmm. people really struggle staying in the mood for sex. Like they'll be in the mood at like three in the afternoon, but then 7 PM rolls around or 10 PM rolls around and they're not in the mood anymore. So we have uh -huh. like a whole sheet for that, you know? And again, it's all about like systems, tools. I'm just, I love practical resources to help people actually achieve success. And so that is what the power couple is about or power couple planner is all about. And that I, I believe that is the recipe for becoming a power, a power couple. couple. Great. There's something in in this that's kind of below the surface that I'm picking up on. Mm -hmm. And that's, I just see a lot of couples do this. They self-edit. They mm -hmm. don't bring their full honest self to the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I can see them having a planner. That's all fine and good. But don't we kind of tend to live small or silence our desires, um, think, thinking there's virtue in subordinating what we want for what our spouse wants. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's no growth and development in that. Mm -hmm. What advice do you give to a couple that, that might find themselves like, well, of course I want more sex this week, but mm -hmm. I know you're busy and tired and you don't, mm -hmm. you're all, saying you're overwhelmed all the time. And so nothing gets said mm -hmm. and, and then nothing gets improved on. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons that I wanted it to be in a planner form is because you can track it. You can go back and look at it. So you could use this with your therapist even. Like if you're working with a counselor and one of the things you struggle with is intimacy and like the frequency of sex. It's not just a positive spin. It's also, hey, I can look back and see, wait, we wrote it in the calendar that we were going to have sex on Thursday, but mm -hmm. she said no. And then the next week she said no. And then the next week she said no. So it is a tracking system. And then you, mm -hmm. can, you can begin to address it, but it's going to be it's uh, accountability in all directions. It's did I speak up for my needs? Did I write it in the, did I even write it in the planner that I wanted to, like, I'll use a weird example. Like I love, this doesn't sound so unrelated, but like I love um, like Indiana Jones and there's a new Indiana Jones movie coming out this summer. Yes. I cannot uh -huh. wait, cannot uh -huh. wait. And I would love it if my husband took me on like a secret Indiana Jones date. Like if he surprised me and if he, I mean, it doesn't even need to be a surprise. I could write it in there and I would still feel surprised. But like, uh -huh. I would love it if he took me, let me think about this. Like if he went to, an, uh, like there's a, a noodle restaurant in Seattle I haven't been to yet called like Bang Bang Noodle. I don't know how you uh -huh. say it, but that look, place looks really cool. So like if I have, if I have that desire, Seth can't read my mind. He's not going to know, but mm -hmm. I have the power and now I have a place to make my request known and say, mm -hmm. hey, I would really love it if you took me to Bang Bang Noodle and then we went to the cinema place in downtown that has the like full reclining seats and we watched the new Indiana Jones movie and then we went and got a tattoo. I would totally be down for that. I really <laughs> would be down for that. With a big ship on the side yes, <laughs> with a rope. Yes. Um, and so I think it's, it is a great tool Number one, to track, are you doing the things you say you're going to do? Are you actually taking the walks that you put in your planner or are you mm -hmm. not? And if not, why? It's a tracking tool, all directions. Are you actually writing in it the things that you want? If not, why? Right? And it gives you a place to track it. I, I don't, I mean, you probably heard the like what gets measured gets managed saying. Yes. It's uh -huh. one of my favorite sayings. Like if you're not tracking it and almost nobody is tracking these things in their marriage. Maybe mm -hmm. you are, <laughs> but most people aren't. I have an app um, for that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. Say, you have an app for that. Uh, but this is really like the concept is somewhere to, to reference it. And then also like there's um, 
a little hidden journal section at the end. I forgot, I forgot about that. It's like one of my favorite features is that at the end of each week, it says, I'm thankful for you this week because, and then there's just a little journaling session, right? And so like, or section rather, it's just tiny, mm-hmm. it's like a paragraph. Um, and so like even in Seth's, I'm going to read his, this is so vulnerable. It says, I'm thankful for you this week because uh, you showed up even when it was hard. I'm thankful that you met with me to pray even when we had been arguing. Thank you with a smiley face. Um, mm-hmm. And that, what I love about this is that after a year, so this is a full year, mm-hmm. after a year, you have a journal of your progress in your marriage. Where else are you going to have that? I mean, it's just such a cool, such a cool feature in my mind. That is so cool. Very good. So there's this theme that I'm just picking up on and I'm I'm Mm going to say it again, but you have to be willing to step up and fully own your part of the marriage in order to make this work. Absolutely. Right. This can't be something where one spouse is like, Oh, I'm going to plan it. And then the other Mm -hmm. person just silently complies. There's, that's not how you create a power couple. You can only create a power couple when there's enough room for two in the relationship. Yeah. There's also situations where you're going to have one spouse that's a lot more domineering than the other. They're going to take over and take charge. And that's me. And kind of push out the other person, right? <laughs> right. So you need to get, you need to have more awareness of mm-hmm. your tendency to overfunction in those areas and yeah. to allow for room for two people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love to use the visualization of like superheroes. I know that sounds silly, but like the Marvel movies or whatever, where they're yeah. like this uh-huh. dynamic duo and there's there's uh-huh. two of them and they're working really hard. You have to figure out that dance. Um, I jokingly said when you said like one of you is going to push the other one out, that's me. I'm the one that pushes everything. I'm the one that could easily railroad Seth. Easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, easy. I could do it in my sleep, which uh-huh. is terrible. And you I know have a lot that of practice that's... doing it. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not an ideal situation and it's not what I want for my marriage. And after counseling, you know, we do biblical counseling, we've done therapy, all of the things. I- I've had to look at myself and say, where do I need to pull back? That's why I'm not allowed to write in the ways that he wants to connect. He has to write them in because it may be that he wants to connect by going duck hunting. I don't know. But I, mm-hmm. but I used to like, oh, duck hunting, that's gross. Oh. Right? I used to be like a wet blanket, but also like a, you know, like a railway train. I don't know what the word is I'm trying to say, like a train, like a thing that pushes him over. Um, and I had to learn that skill. A bulldozer? The, a bulldozer. There we go. There you go. <laughs> and the best way to do it was to have it be like systematized. There are rules to follow. And mm-hmm. if I break them, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. Where do people go to get this planner? They can go to anatomyofus.com and it is available there. You'll see a little tab that says Power Couple Planner. Um, it's, we, you know, you just order it. It's there. It's ready to rock and roll. And then also I wanted to mention too, we're doing the Power Couple Summit. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the Power Couple Summit in July with Larry Hagner of the Dad Edge Podcast. He is amazing. And we are co-creating the Power Couple Summit at the Hilton Orlando in Florida, July 28th, 29th. And then we're going to take our kids to Disney World on the 30th. It's going to be amazing. We're going to go through the Power Couple Planner. Everybody who is in attendance is going to get one. We're going to walk you through it and then do, a, a, you know, of course, a bunch of other just like awesome marriage stuff. And you'll be in a beautiful, beautiful, sunny Orlando when we do that. But yeah, you can just go to anatomyofus.com to find everything for the tickets to the event and then the planner itself, all of those things. And then to learn more about what we do with coaching and our podcast and all that stuff. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. It is also always so much fun to talk to you. Arms in the air. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you're interested in accelerating growth in your marriage, either sexually, emotionally, or spiritually, I want to invite you to work with me in my affordable coaching program called Next Level. More information about Next Level and my fun and sexy apps for couples are available at getyourmarriageon.com. Please also don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a single episode. And be sure to tell your married friends, I promise, they will thank you for life. Now go get your marriage on.